Hi, this is Sean with Omu Energy, and today we're gonna to show you how to swap out the 12 volt battery in your Rivian R1S. So we've got this 2023 R1S, VIN number is right around 22,000. The, all of the Rivian stopped doing the dual battery configuration and they moved to a single battery configuration. So we already have a video for the R1T slash R1S because they are the same up front uh, that you can watch if you have the dual battery configuration. But if you have one of the later models uh, that rolled out with the single battery plus capacitor, then this would be the, the video to watch because this, is, that's, this, is, this, this, this vehicle is a single battery vehicle. Uh, the process is very similar. It's mostly the same. It's just instead of swapping two batteries, we're just gonna swap one. We love the Rivians. I've been a big fan ever since before they were ever released, really, but we had the Rivian R1T, which I spent a lot of time with uh, for about a year. Loved that truck. Uh, it was wonderful, so much fun. And uh, then we had a Lightning for a while, and now we're back in the Rivian. This is, this is my personal vehicle. Uh, and it's, it's so much better, the R1S. Uh, if, if, you, if you have a family, the space is just, is just much more useful in, in, in utility. Um, being an SUV in the back seats, you've got more space and they can, they can move back and forth a bit. So, so the, those sitting in the middle row are much more comfortable than in the pickup truck. And then of course, if you need it, you've got a third row of seating too in these, which is wonderful. And they've got all the cool, neat, uh, off roadsy and adventure type things that all the Rivians have. So big, big, uh, excitement on this vehicle. All right, on this vehicle, we're going to swap out that lead acid battery for uh, lithium. And there are some important safety considerations whenever we do these swaps that we'll talk about right now. Uh, make sure that you have some gloves and safety glasses. Those will be the safety tools that you're gonna have. And then the other thing I wanted to share with you guys is that the lead acid batteries, uh, when they leak, the acid is very uh, corrosive and it can eat anything up pretty much. I mean, there's, there's some things that are totally resistant to it, but there's a lot of things that are not. Uh, recently we had one in the back of the Lightning pickup truck and it tipped over while driving. And now the carpet got eaten up in the area where it tipped over and, and spilled out some acid and, uh, and it stripped the paint off of the vehicle. That was from a, a Model Y uh, lead acid battery. So bring a plastic bag. If you, if you have a concern about that, throw, throw the battery in a plastic bag afterwards. That way you can make sure you transport it without potentially getting acid or anything. Tools wise, it's very simple. You just need a few sockets. So you'll need an eight millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, and a 13 millimeter socket. And I like to use a cordless drill if you can do so safely, uh, just because you can over torque things if you use them and you're not super comfortable with them. Uh, so if you're worried about that, then just go with go with a hand um, go with a hand tool. But I use these uh, just to make things go quicker. The consideration of importance with the hand tool is if you do use them, make sure you get one that's uh, electrically insulated, just because you're working with electricity and and when you're unscrewing the the terminal bolts, there's always the potential that you could touch the other terminal with the tool and arc across. So if you get something that's electrically insulated, um, there's, there's, there's tool sets that are made out of uh, like carbon instead of, instead of metal. And those will, um, those will be more safe to use in this scenario. So I would recommend them. The other thing to have that's helpful is some kind of little pick or a small screwdriver because getting the plastic cover off of the fuse terminal that's right on top of the Battery is kind of a pain and there's sometimes like they're difficult to uh, unclip. And so something like this just makes that process easier and, and you'll see that. All right, quick overview of the install. Uh, there's two methods and one's a little more difficult and one's easier. The way that we're going to do it is easier. You're just gonna remove this top panel and two bolts here. That will give you enough play with this top edge of the front to kind of pull it forward slightly and, and work on things and get, get what you need to do done. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can remove all these trim panels. They all pull straight off. Um, somewhere along the way, Rivian stopped doing what we talked about in our previous Rivian video, which was using magnets and uh, metal contacts to, to clip. So now everything is clips. More traditional automaker probably saves money. Um, 
So anyways, these are gonna be clips if you're, if you're in one of these later model vehicles. So you just pull them all straight off with the clips and be careful in case the clip falls off or breaks, you can uh, replace them. Then the front tub will be held down by a series of 10 millimeter bolts around the outside. And then there's a, a wire connector that you disconnect on this side. And you could take the whole front tub off and you have exposure to the whole front uh, area. And then you would uh, be able to, to reach things very easily. We don't have to do that, which is why we don't do that. And so we will jump to it and show you how we do it. All right, let's do it. The top trim panel here comes out by lifting up each side. You'll kind of go through a series of clips that pop out, then scoot out over to the other side, see the same thing. Once you've got it free, then you can just kind of shimmy it out and go set that somewhere safe. Now we've got two bolts to remove. They're both 10 millimeter and they sit right here. They're kind of very long, oddly enough, because they don't need to be, but that is how they are, at least on this build date, which of course could change because new manufacturers change things often as they're improving their process. Now that we've got those two bolts out, this top edge of the front you can see has a lot of play and that's what we're going to use to our advantage so that we can get into that battery without having to uh, without having to take out this whole tub. But first you have to assume the Rivian position which means you got to sit up here with your feet down in the tub so that you can reach it and even if you removed the front you'd still have to do that unless you're very tall. Um, I'm six foot one and I pretty much have to do that in order to pull this off so I think unless you're like maybe six foot four or better than I don't, I think you still have to do this. So we're gonna do that and continue. All right, now we can slide this air guide straight up and out. And you don't need to disconnect the temp sensor. Uh, just kind of set it over to the side and leave everything connected as is, is it's no problem. Now in this uh, single battery model, you've got a capacitor on this side and a battery on this side. Um, it is the it is what it's considered the primary battery and the dual battery model. This is the primary, that's secondary. So they replace the secondary with the capacitor uh, system instead. So the first thing we do on this side is remove the negative. You gotta be very careful to not drop the screw, the bolt, rather. So make sure you've got yourself some space, uh, loosen it. Once you've got it loose, make sure your fingers are there to grab, to grab things so you don't lose it. If you rotate it up like this while keeping your tool on there, then you have a better chance of making sure that it lands in your hand. Because this is the negative, you don't have a lot of risk points for it touching ground because it's already grounded to the chassis. So we can just tuck it over to the side without any further kind of prep work on it, uh, just to get it out of the way. So you can put it underneath your uh, brake fluid reservoir there, and that'll hold it off to the side. Now is when we're going to remove this plastic cover. To remove the cover, that's where it's helpful to have a little tool. Let's kind of bring it into those clips to detach them. A little flathead screwdriver would work fine too. This one I found on this vehicle to be a real pain is this front corner. But there you go, that is off. And you can set those things right there. Now that those are off, we really only need to remove these two. I mentioned the 13 millimeter in case you want to remove these, but you don't really have to. If you remove these two, then you can actually, for safety's sake, put the cover back on and then tuck it up here and that'll keep that out of the way and then you can proceed to slide the battery out. 
So these are 10 millimeters. Again, be careful not to drop. So we just removed this nut and that nut. Now we're gonna take these off. And if you have an extra pair of gloves, what I like to do is put it over the top so that the live, potential live wire doesn't hit anything while it's there. Same with this, which is actually a set of two wires. Extra insulated gloves work well to do that task. Now there's one more eight millimeter bolt that goes into the top of the battery right there. This one, because the tray is uh, there, if you loosen it, you can pick up the, the, the bolt afterwards. So you can loosen that. Let it fall out in there. Make sure it's out of your tool before you pull it away. So otherwise it might fall somewhere you don't want it. Then you can go in and grab those. It's going to be a bolt and then like, depending on build time, I assume it's going to be two or three washers in there. All right, so now you can actually put this cover back on here. And if there were any of them that were like really difficult to clip in, maybe don't clip those ones back in, but they may all clip back in whether you like it or not. Then you can slide this kind of up here, wedge it like that, and then you can get to the battery. So we're gonna remove this eight millimeter bolt there. Put your hand in there to make sure it doesn't fall. This bracket just comes off. Now you can slide the battery out. We have already updated this car with the lithium, so it's really easy to slide the battery out because it's significantly lighter than the lead acid battery. So that made it look really easy. Um, I mean, it's doable, of course, uh, if, if it's lead acid, but you're gonna struggle with it a little more. Just, just try to get something maybe to wedge under the, the corners to, to, to shimmy it up. It's heavier, so that's what makes it harder. It's harder to just kind of grab with your fingers and slide it up. Um, so this battery is out, so now if you were if you were doing the swab, this is when you'd bring in your, your lithium and get rid of the lead acid and then put it back in and reverse the steps. We're gonna show you the weight difference before we do that. All right, now we're gonna weigh the battery. So first we're gonna throw the Rivian lead acid battery on here by C and D actually is the manufacturer. And it is 14, more than 14 pounds from this battery. So that we will compare now with the OMU lithium, which registers in only about five and a half pounds. So you're looking at like an eight, more than an eight pound weight savings um, between these two batteries, which may not seem like a ton, but every little bit counts on a vehicle for sure in terms of efficiency. And also when it comes to installing these batteries, the lighter weight is just so much easier to work with that that's also very helpful. All right, so now you can bring your lithium battery in. It's going to sit down into that space. Then we're gonna bring this bracket back in, the tie down bracket, make sure it's clipped into the front. And then bring the eight millimeter bolt. Tighten that down. Now we can allow this to come back in contact. We've got to remove the cover again. Okay. And we can Bring this down. I like to connect the wires first. Okay. 
10 millimeter nut goes back on to secure it. You can hand tighten it first and secure the other. Okay, so then you're gonna, we're gonna center this hole right here back onto the battery terminal. Bring in the bolts with the washers. Get that started by hand. Now we can bring in our tool, make that connection a little more secure. Don't over tighten it. Just make it nice and snug. Then we can tighten those two down as well. As soon as you've got that secured, these two nuts and the bolt, go ahead and put your cover back on to eliminate the unnecessary risk of shorting anything to those to that live uh, voltage there. Then we're going to make our last connection. Pull the negative wire here. Uh, this connection could arc while you do it because it's uh, going to be allowing the electricity to flow from this battery to the rest of the vehicle. So, be ready with getting it centered by kind of looking from the top down and then just put it right into place and then hold it in place so that you don't have to keep on pulling it up and putting it back down. It'll, there's actually a uh, indentation in the bottom of the terminal that fits right over the top of the battery adapter that's on there that will guide it into its spot just right. So once you get it lined up, you hold it down in there and then you can finger tight that bolt back on. Then come back in again with your tool and snug it. I would hold on to the negative lug while you do it, just to make sure you don't over tighten it. So now that's nice and secure and we can reverse all the rest of the steps to put everything back together. So your plastic tree uh, guide here, we'll just slide back into that spot. Then we can climb out and finish by reconnecting these two 10 millimeter bolts and then put the plastic trim back across the top there. Now we can bring in the two really long 10 millimeter bolts and kind of guide them in. Maybe they're super long for tolerance reasons, I don't know. But once you get them started, then you can finish them off with your tool. With those secured, you can now put the plastic trim back in the top there and secure it on each side by pushing down. You can note underneath, there are no clips along the center area, so don't, don't get too uh, uh, concerned that you're not able to get anything to clip in the center. Just some on this side and some on that side. So that's it, the battery is swapped. Uh, let me give you a couple anecdotes here. One, I've done this swap on this exact vehicle and there's gonna be some alerts on the screen after you do it because the battery was removed and put back. So some modules would have failed validation, not validation, but they would have failed some tests during that period. And so there's gonna be some alerts. So what I made the mistake of doing was uh, pushing it right to 
right to the uh, hard reset by holding the left steering wheel button and the, uh, the uh, emergency flasher button down and, letting it, and forcing it to do the reboot that way. What happened, oddly enough, was that it didn't ever fully, re it didn't come back. It just, it just shut down and stayed down. Um, so in order to fix that, I just restarted. I would, we just disconnected the 12-volt battery, reconnected it, and then it all came back like, like that never happened. Um, so instead of that, just drive the vehicle like two feet. Put it in drive, it'll, it, it'll go in a drive. Drive like two feet and all the alerts just clear. Uh, so we'll show you that process really quick inside. All right, so when you get back in the car, close the doors, put your foot on the brake. Uh, some alerts might start popping up here. I just, I just did this so they, 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 they came up and now they went, but there's still active alerts down here. So go ahead and put it in drive. You might get some other alerts. So in this case, I left the hood open, so we're gonna close that quick. Things will may take a little longer to boot, or not boot, but switch between because it's freshly booting. All right, so that's closed. Now we can go into drive and it should allow you to do that, no problem. Uh, if anything sticks around after that first little drive, most of the, any of the drive alerts or inverter alerts would have cleared. Anything that sticks around should clear on your first like uh, actual drive. All right, the battery has been swapped. You have upgraded now from lead acid to lithium and all the wonderful benefits that come with that, like longer life, less weight, uh, less toxicity, less materials being used, so it's more eco-friendly. Uh, you're gonna get to enjoy maybe eight to 10 years out of your battery and not have to change it all the time uh, like you would with a lead acid. So all those wonderful things. The other cool part about having the OMU lithium battery in here is that you now have access to the OMU app, which allows you to do things like check the battery health and also what it's doing. So you can see what voltage it's at and if the current is going in or out of the battery and the temperature of the 12 volt battery as well. And uh, throughout time, we'll upgrade uh, the app and upgrade maybe even the, the battery through firmware updates that we, we can push through the app, which are pretty neat and sometimes can, can, can make a difference. Uh, and then this battery also with the Rivian has self-heating technology. So that means whenever it gets cold, uh, if the battery gets below a certain temperature, it actually starts to warm itself up before and, well, during charging. So it's not gonna warm itself up for discharging because that's totally unnecessary. And uh, to be honest, with lithium iron phosphate, you really don't need to warm them up that much depending on the current that is charging. If you're trying to charge at a very high current, you should warm it up, but if it's at a fairly low current, you don't really need to. But uh, this battery actually has the ability to manage all of that for you. So you don't have to think about it. It's just it's just one of the cool features about this battery that, that uh, make it last even longer and make it even safer to use. So that's it. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video and you learned everything you need to do to do this. But if not, you need some more help, you can always visit our website, omu.com, or if you need help, you can go to omu.com slash support, uh, or reach out to us through email, support at omu.com, and ask any questions that you have, and we are always happy, happy to try to help as much as we can. Take care and enjoy your cars.